When it comes to electric pickup trucks, the most frequent question I get asked is how far will they tow? And the easy answer is there is no easy answer. The more difficult answer is it depends on how you tow, where you tow, the speeds, the kind of trailer you're towing, how heavy it is, what kind of trailer it is, etc. Because there's so many variables to give you a little bit of a better idea, I have a Rivian R1T here and a Ford F-150 Lightning, and then behind I have a 14-foot box trailer. The reason I chose the box trailer is it's far less aerodynamic than my flatbed, even though that trailer back there weighs about half of what my flatbed weighs, it generally yields poorer fuel economy, especially out on the open highway at around 50 or 60 miles an hour. Now keep in mind that in California, legally towing speeds are quite low. 55 miles an hour is as fast as you're supposed to go. Obviously people will exceed that a little bit. So in this test, we're gonna try and set the cruise control to 60 miles an hour to give folks out there that are in Texas a bit of a better idea of things. Now, obviously if you're gonna tow that at 80 miles an hour, it is going to be far, far less efficient because when we're talking about efficiency and aerodynamics, it is not a linear curve. When you're going faster and faster and faster, it's more of an exponential thing. So the drag increases and increases and increases. Now I am going to bet that the effect of that trailer on the back of these trucks is going to be higher with the Rivian than with the F-150 Lightning, and here's why. The Rivian is more aerodynamic in its own right. We have a much smaller frontal profile here. You can see the front end is a lot smoother, more aerodynamic, and that's probably the big reason that the Rivian is more efficient out on the open highway at the same speed. At about 70 miles an hour, the Rivian is at least 35% more efficient than the F-150 Lightning. And that's why the F-150 Lightning does not really hit its EPA numbers in my real world range test, whereas the Rivian absolutely blew them out of the water. But let's take these out of the road and find out how this is gonna go. Now I will warn you, these tests are going to complete after dark. So let's just uh, collect the information and then get back to things in the studio. Let's take a quick look at the trailer. This trailer has a nominal curb weight of around 1,650 pounds, but we do have a bunch of different things in here. Uh, we haven't cleaned up the trailer in a while, so randomly we have what looks like about uh, 300 pounds of concrete also under there, and just some random things that we have moved around here and there. So this particular trailer probably comes in at around 2,500 pounds total. The reason I chose this trailer out of my collection is because of its frontal profile. You can see it's pretty tall. Height off the ground is about nine feet or so, and it's relatively wide and very, very square. All this means that it's far less aerodynamic than something like a boat, but it is pretty similar to a lot of camping trailers. Generally speaking, as far as straight line highway driving, the frontal profile of the trailer, as well as the rolling resistance of the tires on the ground, those are gonna be your bigger factors rather than curb weight or exactly what kind of trailer it is. Frontal area, as long as it's pretty similar, that kind of aerodynamic drag, it's gonna be pretty consistent whether it's a big boat you're towing or a big box trailer, etc., etc. Now let's talk about the trailering hardware. First on the F-150. In terms of cameras, the F-150 has two facing the rear. We have one right back here, just below the release for the tailgate, and then one up there to view your cargo. The one here has a pretty good top-down view. You can see positioning this camera right about where that camera is located. And as you can see, it's looking right down on this step section here. You can also see your wiring connections, and most importantly, you can see the hitch receiver. Now the hitch receiver itself sticks out quite far from the vehicle. As you can see, it's pretty much even with that portion of the bumper right there, quite far from the tailgate itself. Going down here, we have large metal tabs for the safety chain connection, pretty typical two inch receiver, seven pin and four pin wiring harness connections. That's a nice touch because if you have a lot of trailers with both of these connections, it's gonna be a little bit easier to deal with than an adapter. Inside the tail lap modules, we find the radar sensors for the blind spot monitoring system. And again, this system is trailer aware. We then have metal bumpers at the bottom with parking sensors that will disable themselves when you're in the towing modes. In the Ford and in the Rivian, trailering is handled a little bit differently. In the Rivian, either it has a trailer or it doesn't as far as the software is concerned. There aren't multiple trailers, etc. Logically, that could be fixed in the software. And range is calculated based off of its default for towing and, of course, your driving history. Here in the Ford, things are different because I can add a trailer. I'm just going to give this a very simple name here, A, because I have that trailer connected. It is a default electric trailer. Brake effort on this particular one is medium. Trailer dimensions, this is... Uh, from the ball to the rear bumper, this is a approximately 20 foot trailer. And then the width of this trailer, we'll go ahead with seven feet. Height, that is definitely not seven feet. That's about, uh, looks currently from the ground. It says from the ground, from the point of the vehicle, trailer, cargo, blah, 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 whichever is the tallest. That is the important part. Uh, this is about 
nine and a half feet tall. Now that I have punched that in, I now tell it the gross trailer weight rating for this particular trailer. It is uh, 7,000 pounds there. Then I go ahead and hit next, pops it right in there. If you want to edit any of these things, you can go back and edit them at any time. For instance, if you want to change this particular one right now, I might actually put this in at a lower weight because it's going to assume that there's a bit of cargo in it. And right now this trailer is empty. So I'm going to go ahead and choose 3,000 pounds, hit confirm. Now the vehicle is going to start downloading estimates from the cloud for other trailers similar to this in something like a Lightning. Go ahead and click close. And now you'll see that the vehicle's range has dropped down to an estimated 121 miles versus what it had before. And I can toggle back and forth between these things. And an interesting twist here, I don't have to be in trailer mode for all the trailer goodies to work, of course. So tow haul, off-road, sport, normal, all of that still works just fine, whether or not you have a trailer on the back. But you should know that if I choose the tow haul mode, one pedal drive gets locked out. So that particular option is no, no longer available. Here's the view from the inside of the Rivian. The camera view itself is larger, but it's not as crisp as the one that we find in the Ford. And because of that angle of that camera, you just get a different perspective when you're trying to back up to the hitch. So if I kind of go sort of like that, based on how I see that, is that over? Is that not over? In fact, it's not quite over. I actually have to go further, about like that, for it really to be over the ball. And there's no option for different views here. Some of these might be able to be camera interpolated perhaps, but I think that a relocation of the camera would be required to give you the same sort of top-down views that we find in the Lightning. And speaking of camera views, if you are in a tight spot, the Rivian does have some tiny camera views on the side. People have asked me about this. I complained about these in another video. You can see that we have front wheels and rear wheels, but you can see the front wheels more prominently based on the camera location, rear wheels not so much. But in the 360 degree camera view, very little information there. We don't get any track views to show you where the tires are gonna go when you're going forward. So nothing like that on the front view. We do get lines on the rear, but even if I put this in drive and get a front view like that, no lines there to really show you how those tires are going to go. Those are features that I would really expect to see in a dedicated off-road vehicle, or at least an off-road intended vehicle like the Rivian. In the Ford, I have to say that the infotainment system is perhaps a little bit more convoluted, definitely sluggish in comparison with the one that we find in the R1T. I had really hoped that Ford would add a faster processor or do whatever it is going to be required to make this feel more snappy, but especially when you first turn on the vehicle and are trying to access features, it's just really kind of clunky. But we do get more views here. That's the forward view right there. If I put the truck in reverse, it'll switch to the rear view. It's pretty crisp. It has that little black dot right there for the center line. Shows you how close things are right there. And if I choose other views, you can see I can just hit this plus button up there in the corner and get a top-down view really easily of that hitch. It's then going to give me parking sensor information down here rather than the 360 cam. I think that's a little bit funny. I would love to see some different camera views there. You can also cycle through the camera views over here. So you can get this 360 view, that hitch down view right there, but again, for some reason, nothing below there. There's also an auxiliary camera input that you can get right there. Trailer reverse guidance is an interesting feature. It requires setup with a particular trailer and then it will recognize it and attempt to just guide you into the trailer. That does seem like kind of a handy touch. We have that bed view, side views like that. Now this is not as off-road oriented of a vehicle as some out there, so we don't find the same sort of views that we find in something like a Bronco or a Wrangler or a Grand Cherokee. But interestingly, you can manipulate images like that and sort of scan around the back of the vehicle using those two side cameras. On the mechanical side of things, the Rivian is definitely a little untruck like You'll notice we don't have a typical truck bumper that you can use as a step in the R1T. Part of that is obviously for aerodynamics, and part of that is just, I think, the way they decided to design the rear end of the vehicle. When I mentioned about the camera earlier, you'll notice there's no camera up here, there's no camera there, there's only a camera right here. So it's never going to have a top-down view of the hitch from the rear. It's always going to be a little bit more side-on. Also, the receiver is tucked quite far under the Rivian. That definitely makes things more aerodynamic because you can put a panel right over there and have a really smooth bumper look. But if you are regularly attaching things, everything is tucked up right there. The wiring harness is under there, the uh, safety chain locations, they're way under there, and that hitch receiver itself is way under there. So it is a little bit less convenient. Other problem I noticed, which I hadn't thought about before, is because of the position of the tailgate relative to that hitch in the vehicle, if you were to try and lower this tailgate, it would hit the jack on a lot of trailers. And that's not something that we see in the F-150 because the tailgate is so much higher on the vehicle that even with the exact same hitch, same trailer, etc., 
things are a little bit further away, and of course, because the receiver is further out from the truck, you may not even hit that on the tailgate, depending on the truck and the trailer combo you're talking about. All right, over here in the Rivian, it has detected that we have a trailer connected, so let's go ahead and switch to towing. You'll see that it has adjusted things like we have the trailer brake gain right there, the ride has gone to stiff, standard brake regen, and then we have only two heights available for the air suspension. One big thing to note is that these heights can only be adjusted when the vehicle is parked if you're in the towing mode. So, for instance, if we wanted to go over here to conserve mode, we'd have to, uh, sorry, any of these modes, we'd have to exit towing, go whatever that mode is, then the suspension would adjust. So, that's a big thing to keep in mind. The other thing to keep in mind is it really wants you to be in that stiff mode there, and that is going to help you out as far as suspension travel in the vehicle when you have heavier weights in the back can make it feel a little bit funky. So if you know you're going on smoother paved roads, I would definitely recommend going for soft instead. On the brake regen, I personally prefer high brake regen, but you should know that we don't have as much regeneration ability in the Rivian as we have in the Lightning, and this does not have a blended braking system. So when you put your foot down there on the brake pedal, you're not commanding any more regeneration ability into the battery. You're simply controlling the friction brakes, and that's not what's going on in the Lightning. The Lightning, you put your foot on the brake pedal, you get more and more regen until it can no longer regen anymore, and then it's gonna start involving the friction brakes. Over here, we have an estimated range now of 107 miles. So let's go ahead and reset the trip odometer here. We'll go ahead and reset this one. You'll see that on that first run unladen, we were at 2.71 miles per kilowatt hour. So let's take a look and see how this goes. Now that I'm out on the road, the first thing I should do is talk about the testing procedure. I currently have the trailer on the F-150 Lightning. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna drive a 50 mile test loop going from 1,200 feet in elevation down to sea level on this winding road, and then out on California's Highway 1 with a top speed of 60 miles an hour. The speed limit there is 65, but in California, again, we're supposed to tow at 55 miles an hour. So in this video, you will probably see me being passed by all manner of vehicles with trailers, buses, etc., because obviously, no one really follows the speed limit when they're towing in California unless they absolutely have to, but that is technically the speed limit, so I'm gonna try and stick at least somewhat close to it. If you are in a higher speed limit state, keep that in mind. You are going to see more of a reduction in your fuel economy, more of a reduction in your range if you're towing at higher speeds. If you're one of the folks out there that is seriously considering an electric truck as their next tow vehicle, and you really wanna know what real world range is going to be like in your particular condition, then the best thing you can do is take your current tow vehicle out, whether it's an SUV or a truck, et cetera, take it out with and without the trailer and really get a handle on what kind of fuel economy you're seeing in that combination as far as out on the open highway, out uh, driving up and down mountain passes, et cetera. You should logically see a very similar reduction of range in your gasoline vehicle as in an electric vehicle. Now, some folks have asked me, doesn't regen braking really help an electric vehicle out? And the answer is no, because Yes, you are regenerating power back into the battery going downhill, but you also have to power the vehicle back uphill. And powering an extra 2,000, 3,000, 10,000 pounds, that's going to take a lot more energy than simply driving in steady state driving. So yes, you can regenerate some energy back into the battery, but it's never gonna be as much as it took to get you up the hill in the first place. The next thing we should talk about is the kind of trailering tech that each vehicle has. Some of the hardware and software features are similar and some are definitely very different. Let's start with the software features because this is certainly a point of differentiation. Here in the F-150 Lightning, we have all of the same sort of gadgets and gizmos that Ford has spent decades developing for their trucks, regardless of whether we're talking about the electric truck, the hybrid truck, the gasoline truck, the diesel truck. This has blind spot monitoring that is trailer aware biggie, biggie, biggie that we do not have on the Rivian for some reason. And that honestly surprises me because a decent number of even midsize SUVs have trailer aware blind spot detection. So this vehicle, it will disable the rear cross traffic when a trailer is connected, but because it knows the length of the trailer because you've entered it into the system or it's guessed it because it can do that as well, it will let you know whether something's in your blind spot when you're trying to change lanes left or right with the sensors that are in the back of the truck. Also, the F-150 Lightning is available with Ford's larger mirrors. These mirrors are definitely bigger than the ones that we find in the Rivian, and you can also logically get trailering specific mirrors for the F-150 Lightning. Depending on the trim level that you're talking about, they may or may not be included, but you could easily swap in some aftermarket accessories. Again, the aftermarket accessory game in the F-150 Lightning, as I've said before, is definitely more advanced because almost everything that will work on a regular F-150 will also work on the Lightning. And the Rivian, of course, it's a new vehicle, so there's a little bit less out there in the aftermarket space. 
The next thing we should talk about are the camera views. Both vehicles have 360 degree cameras and a ton of cameras around the vehicle. But the ones in the Ford are certainly more focused at hauling and towing. While we're paused here, I can take a quick picture of this. So you can see in this camera view, for instance, we have a very vertical view of the hitch. You can see exactly how that's oriented as far as their, their horizontal orientation, I guess you could say. So you really know that the receiver is over the ball. And in the Rivian, we don't have that same view. It's a little bit more similar to this, where things are a little bit at an angle only the camera in the Rivian is much lower to the ground. So instead of looking sort of down on the hitch and the receiver ball, et cetera, all of that, you're sort of looking across at it on the same plane. So it's really difficult to tell when the one is over the other. The Ford truck also has some extra features. For instance, a bed camera so you can see what's going on in the bed, and these cameras will activate at different speeds and things like that versus what we find in the Rivian. Also, the backup line that we get on this system for backing up into a trailer, it's a little bit better done, and the camera views are certainly crisper than the ones that we find in the R1T. I suspect that some of that could be fixed in future software updates, obviously, but the camera views, because of the camera positioning, I don't know if that can be changed. They might be able to do some digital manipulation, but I highly doubt it. I suspect they're going to have to add extra cameras to that if they want to change that. It's all because of the way that Rivian wanted the tailgate to look. They didn't want that latch mechanism high on the tailgate. They wanted only a camera much lower on the tailgate, so it simply doesn't have the right angle as far as viewing the camera if you want to have that top-down look. The next interesting twist between these two vehicles, and you'll notice I'm no longer looking at the camera, I'm looking squarely straight ahead, is that the F-150 not only allows you to have radar adaptive cruise control on while towing, which is what I'm doing right now, so that way I can make sure I have a really consistent speed, it also allows you to use their aggressive lane centering system and Blue Cruise if you are on a Blue Cruise enabled road. So all of those features are available to you even when you have a trailer connected. And for some reason on the Rivian R1T, even the basic feature of adaptive cruise control following that vehicle in front of you with a preset distance, that is not available. I think that's a little bit weird because it's the only vehicle I can think of in current production where that functionality does not work when you have a trailer connected. Really can't think of another vehicle that will do that. I personally find adaptive cruise control a very handy feature out on longer road trips with a trailer on the back because it really helps you maintain that longer following distance that you might want when you're towing for safety because you could just pop this thing into its longest following distance. You'll be a decent distance away from the vehicle in front, have plenty of time to resume control yourself when you need to. Also on the software side of things, the F-150 has a trailer light check function so that we will run through your trailer lights. You can check your trailer lights yourself rather than having someone to help you or just not checking them at all. We also have the smart hitch functionality and the onboard scales functionality optional in the F-150. This vehicle has the ability through the suspension to actually weigh the truck, weigh the payload, and weigh the hitch weight on the back. So if you're concerned about how much weight you're putting on your truck, how much weight you're putting in your truck, whether you're in the appropriate window for your truck, this solves that completely. You basically hit zero, you start loading your truck up, and it will tell you when you fit your maximum payload. And remember, payload includes the driver, passengers, etc. Everything that you're adding onto the vehicle and accessories aftermarket. So roof loads, all that kind of stuff, that's all going into the payload of the vehicle. And if you're really bumping up there against your max payload, you're not gonna have a lot of towing ability left because the tongue weight is part of that payload figure. So for each of these vehicles, if you want to tow 10,000 pounds, Rivian tops out at 11,000, Lightning tops out at 10,000, you're talking about 1,000 pounds of tongue weight, which will deduct from the approximately 1,600 pounds of payload available in either of these vehicles. So 10,000 pound trailer on the back, 600 pounds of whatever on the inside, that's me, someone else, maybe a poodle. In the Lightning, there's one piece of trailering tech that I just don't find useful. It's this Pro Trailer Backup Dial Knobby Widget. We have something very similar in a decent number of trucks on the market currently. I've always been of the opinion that if you cannot back up your trailer yourself, you probably should not have a trailer connected to your vehicle. I also think that this knobby thing, it just ends up taking more time to back up the trailer. I have never really found it that useful. Every time I've been at an event where a manufacturer has tried to demo one of these trailer backup widgets, I've found myself being faster and more confident backing up the trailer myself. And I don't really think I'm that great of a trailer backer upper, I guess you'd say. I just think that this is kind of a weird crutch and sometimes it's not really that useful. I'm always told that this kind of feature is designed for someone that tows very infrequently, maybe once every few years or so. 
That I find weird, because the way these trailer systems are set up, most of them, they require a decent amount of setup before you can use it. And at that point, you've probably already figured out either how to do it yourself, or you've pissed off everybody at the boat ramp and you have to leave in shame anyway. Now let's talk about the way these two trucks feel while they're towing a load. The F-150 feels like a regular half-ton truck, admittedly more like a half-ton truck at maximum payload, because the ride quality in here is excellent, things are definitely damped, the F-150 has a big, heavy feel to it. Interesting twist, the Rivian is actually the heavier truck by a decent margin. It's over 7,100 pounds. The Lightning, definitely significantly lighter, but still pretty darn heavy for a half-ton truck. It's all due to the batteries. But the Lightning also has a very different suspension design, and I would be really intrigued to see if Ford ever decides to adapt this to the regular F-150, because this has a fully independent rear suspension. In terms of its design, it's kind of, sort of, but not exactly the same as what we find in Ford's full-size SUVs. Of course, because that big motor's back there, not a traditional differential. But you get a very similar sort of ride quality in the new F-150 Lightning, because of that independent rear suspension. This does not become jittery over broken pavement. It doesn't bounce and hop around in the rear. It feels pretty similar whether it's loaded or unloaded in the back, whether it has a trailer on the back or not. This is the most composed F-150. As far as ride quality goes, if you're looking for the best riding half-ton truck, it's probably going to be this and the Ram 1500 with the adaptive air suspension in a very close tie but this is going to be more composed over broken pavement than that Ram because it still has a solid axle in the rear. And the independent suspension really fixes a lot of those things that pickup truck buyers sometimes complain about, but ultimately they'll get used to. That light feeling in the bed, you've probably heard about people saying, oh, I like to keep a few pounds of whatever in the bed because my truck rides better. Not a concern in the F-150 Lightning. Also worth noting, the F-150 Lightning has a better weight balance than any other F-150 because the battery pack, it's pretty much in the middle of the vehicle, right under where I'm sitting and under the rear seats and a little bit under the bed as well. And that means that this doesn't have that same sort of front heavy handling feel that we find in a regular half ton truck. I've now reached the halfway point of run one. It's time to turn around and head back up the hill. So far, fuel economy not been great. 1.6 miles per kilowatt hour. And on my road trip range test, I ended up averaging about two miles per kilowatt hour. We will of course see what this is like without the trailer on the back. I wouldn't be surprised if it was decently over two miles per kilowatt hour. Now it is worth noting that if you wanna get the 300 miles or 320 miles rated range on this vehicle, then you need to somehow magically achieve 2.4 miles per kilowatt hour average. And that is absolutely not going to happen out on the open highway, which is why if you take a look at the EPA test numbers for this vehicle, when they're talking about highway mileage, this is only EPA rated for 283 miles out on the open highway. So when we're talking about range reduction with a trailer, most people are thinking road trip style range while towing a trailer. Don't look at the EPA combined number, you have to look at the highway number. So this truck already gets an immediate loss of about 40 miles when we're talking about the combined range figure versus the highway range figure. So 283 miles, theoretically, according to Ford, is what this should get out on the open highway. Of course, in my road trip range test, it ended up really right around 250 miles of real world range. We'll see how this comes in with the trailer. Jumping into the Rivian, you're gonna notice a few things right away. The first, obviously, is gonna be that adaptive air suspension that is gonna give this a cushier ride, generally speaking, than the Lightning, and it's gonna feel a little bit more like a Grand Cherokee or a Land Rover Range Rover or something along those lines. It also has some adjustable personalities, so you can choose the stiffer mode or the softer mode, depending on what you're interested in, and you can, of course, get a ton of ground clearance, way more ground clearance than you can get in the Lightning. In fact, in the lowest height mode in the Rivian, it is definitely higher than the regular drive mode in Lightning, the only one that the Lightning has. The other thing you'll notice for both of these trucks is that because they're full-time four-wheel drive, this one has four electric motors, the Lightning has two, one on each axle, they feel very, very sure-footed out on gravel roads, dirt roads, things like that, ice, snow, anything like that. These are gonna feel more sure-footed, especially than a part-time pickup truck. Remember that in a part-time four-wheel drive vehicle, you have to be on a slippery surface or a surface like the gravel road that I'm on here in order to use the four high mode or four low mode because they're not intended to be used on all surfaces. They won't let the front and rear axles turn at different rates. And that's not what's going on in either of these trucks. Now, obviously the locking differential in the light Lightning, that should only be used on looser surfaces like this, but most folks aren't probably going to need that until they really get stuck. 
The other thing you're going to notice in the Lightning versus the Rivian is that the Rivian has a much tighter turning radius and that makes this particular turn as I am leaving my property a whole lot easier, especially with a longer flatbed trailer. So the Lightning has about the same kind of turning radius you'll find in the average half ton truck. The Rivian is considerably tighter, although not quite as tight as I might like. Speaking of hardware, another thing you'll notice is that the side view mirrors in the Rivian are not as wide as the ones in the F-150. So if you're really concerned about getting a good look around your trailer, you should keep that in mind. Also, these side view mirrors are positioned on a narrower section of the body. So even though there are portions of the Rivian's body that are as wide as the F-150's body, basically they're around the wheel wells, up here where the side view mirrors are, it's about six inches narrower, generally speaking. And that means that if you have a bigger, wider trailer in the back, you're not gonna have as good a view around the trailer. Now, fortunately, even though the controls are mixed use, Rivian did think about what happens if you're adjusting the side view mirror and you needed to control the trailer brake. If you just click down on the center thumb wheel on the right-hand side of the steering column, that will activate the trailer brake. Speaking of the trailer brake, here's how that works in the Rivian. You connect the trailer, the right side button module on the steering wheel becomes the trailer brake control. You use the infotainment system to adjust the trailer brake gain, but to actually activate the trailer brake if you need to in an emergency situation, you press the button in the center right there on the steering wheel. I really find that a great addition, actually. Some folks have really disliked this that I've talked to and that I've, I've seen. I find it to be great in the Rivian. Obviously, it's a personal preference. It did take a bit of getting used to, but the more I thought about it, the more I kind of liked that location because you don't have to have an ugly trailer brake button bank somewhere else. Now let's talk about the driving nature of these vehicles with the trailer attached. Going downhill, the Rivian, remember, is heavier than the Lightning, but the air suspension causes it to feel a little bit different. It doesn't really feel like the trailer is pushing the Rivian around. If you check out my Rivian towing video, I towed 9,000 pounds with the Rivian. It's not that it feels like the trailer is pushing the vehicle around, but occasionally and sort of unexpectedly, the traction and stability control system in the Rivian will attempt to intervene for no particular reason, especially with heavier trailers in the back. And I'm not quite clear why that is, because the handling ability in the Rivian is excellent. And for instance, on a skid pad, it scores higher than the Lightning, thanks to the relatively wide tires, the low center of gravity, and just the general design of the Rivian. I think it has something to do with the air suspension and perhaps maybe the way that they have chosen to program the electronic nannies in the system. It doesn't feel quite as confident as the Lightning, which is something that I honestly had not expected. I had expected this to be perhaps a little bit better. I expected this to tow perhaps like a really good unibody tow vehicle, like a three-row Grand Cherokee or a Dodge Durango or some of those Land Rover products, a BMW X7, Mercedes-Benz GLS, etc. All those have a very confident feel while towing, that is not quite what we find in the Rivian. Now, if you're only an occasional tower or if you've never towed with a vehicle before, you're never gonna notice the difference. But if you're jumping out of a half ton truck into something like the Rivian or even from another mid-sized truck, this is gonna take a bit of getting used to. It's gonna feel a little bit unusual. As we're driving down the incline, I should talk about regenerative braking. Rivian seems to be even more cautious with their battery pack than Ford and Ford generally seems to be pretty conservative. When this vehicle is at 90% capacity, you get very little throttle liftoff regen in the Rivian. You get a lot more in the Lightning. And in the Lightning, even when the battery is at 100%, you get a little bit of regen. Obviously, it's going to be limited because the battery is full. Over here in the Rivian, you really need to drop the battery below 80% before you get what I would call normal feeling regen. And that could be a concern if you live in a hillier area with a trailer, because you're only going to have the friction brakes on the trailer and on the vehicle to slow and stop that trailer. I really wouldn't be surprised if this is something that Rivian fixes via a software update, because clearly this is just a software programming choice for Rivian. They could be more aggressive at regenerating more power back into the battery at some of those higher SOCs. They simply choose not to, but that's something that they could choose to if they decided to later. The ability to tweak the software profiles is certainly a benefit to electric vehicles like this, as is acceleration when you have a trailer attached to it. Now, without a doubt, the more powerful vehicle here is the Rivian. If you wanna get your trailer from zero to 60 insanely quick, you want the Rivian. The Rivian with 9,000 pounds in the back will still get zero to 60 under 10 seconds. It is an absolutely astonishing thing. The Lightning is a little bit slower, but it's not that much slower. Both of these vehicles are very, very quick, even when you have heavier weights on the back. Before I forget, I should talk about drive modes. I am in the standard height mode, towing mode, brake regen is set to high, and the ride currently is set to stiff. 
between stiff and soft, there's not too much of a difference as far as the, what I've described as unusual feel as far as having a trailer on the back of the Rivian. It's just that stiff is going to be less comfortable as far as ride quality goes. So I suspect a lot of folks are gonna go to the soft mode, even though sometimes that can add to the unusual feel. Occasionally, if we're talking about big bumps in the road, the softer ride can get an uneasiness in the trailer, but it's not too big of a deal. And I think that the payoff as far as ride comfort is worth it. A lot of you have been asking me, is the R1T a body on frame vehicle or is it a unibody vehicle? Rivian is not overly specific on this, but all indications point to this being a body on frame vehicle with a twist. The twist is that the bed and the body are one piece and then they're popped onto the frame underneath. In a regular pickup truck, that would be three separate pieces, bed, body, and frame. What leads me to say that this is probably a body on frame pickup truck is the isolation that we get in the cabin, as well as all the construction photos, of course, that Rivian has given us the details about the skateboard platform, etc. The skateboard platform is essentially the frame of the truck. But also, unlike a Honda Ridgeline or a Durango or any other SUV that's a unibody thing that is towing, this trailer and hitch combo is pretty noisy, I have to say. I tow with this regularly. The Durango, it's pretty loud. Here, absolutely not very different than we find in a Honda Ridgeline. In the Ridgeline, because it is a unibody truck, I know some people want to say that it's got a frame under there, but the frame units, the frame rails, whatever you want to call it in the Ridgeline, they are all one piece. They're welded together. You cannot separate them. There is no frame that will roll down the road on its own. And as a result, the body of the vehicle acts kind of like a drum when you're towing with a loud trailer on the back, and you will certainly notice the difference versus a traditional body on frame truck. And this Rivian, definitely feels more like the F-150 while towing. This Rivian is quieter than the F-150, interestingly enough, whether or not you have the trailer on the back. One thing worth noting in the Rivian is that when the trailer is connected, you may leave the towing mode, but it still will not let you use the lane centering system or the adaptive cruise control system because it knows there's a trailer connected. So I can leave the towing mode, go into any of the other modes, try and engage that. It's not gonna do that because it says manually brake while towing right there. It knows that it still has that trailer connected on the back but the trailer brake controller is not going to work. So interestingly, you have to be in that towing mode if you want the trailer brake control functionality to work. My intention with this video was not to talk about how far the Rivian can tow, but rather how it feels while you're towing. How easy is it to get things connected? How all the electronic systems work when a trailer's connected? All that sort of stuff. And more importantly, how does it really feel when it has a lot of weight on the back? But because a lot of people want to know about range, here's some basic numbers here for you. And I'm going to cover these in greater detail in a future video. When the 9,100 pound trailer was on the back, this averaged 1.2 miles per kilowatt hour. So theoretically, this battery could be exhausted in about 150 miles or so of towing that particular trailer as long as you're on a similar route to me. So definitely very mountainous, lots of heavy uphill pulls. If, however, you're doing more of a combination of different driving styles out on the highway for long periods of time going 60 miles an hour or so with a 3,000 pound box trailer that I had on this exact truck, it averaged 1.49 miles per kilowatt hour, so more like 200 miles or so of towing. If on the other hand, you had say a 120 gallon fuel trailer, which I also have towed with this Rivian, it is considerably smaller, considerably more aerodynamic. It actually has a very narrow track, so it's entirely behind the aerodynamic profile of the Rivian. That averaged 2.5 miles per kilowatt hour. So about 300 miles of real world towing with this exact truck right here. Now, this exact truck without any trailer on the back, if you were driving it like you were towing, 60 miles an hour maximum, in California on that same drive route, it averaged 2.88 miles per kilowatt hour. So treat it gently, you can get 360 miles of range out of this battery. That should put things in perspective. And as always, the trailer that you're towing is going to have a big impact on your final range figures. Really just, it depends. There's so many different kinds of trailers out there, different profiles, different tires, etc. There's no easy answer to the how far can your truck tow. Now, as to the how does the Rivian feel while it's towing, the feel is decidedly peculiar, I have to say. The way the air suspension and the stability control systems interact with one another, I suspect that's something that Rivian could fix. Again, something a little bit more difficult to fix are some of the camera views around the vehicle, most notably that rear view camera. But are any of these deal breakers for me in the Rivian when towing? I have to say no. They are annoyances and having towed with trucks and SUVs, etc., regularly, they stick out on the Rivian more. But if you've never owned a truck before, or you don't tow very often, it's probably not going to be a huge deal. 
Instead, the bigger deal is going to be the kind of performance that you get out of the Rivian. Again, with 9,000 pounds on the back, this went 0 to 60 about as quick as a Nissan Rogue can do ever. Absolutely dry with just the driver in it. There is so much power on tap that passing uphill is absolutely effortless. Unlike a regular pickup truck or regular SUV that would have to downshift, there are no gears here. So it never has to downshift. You never have to wait for anything. You just press on the pedal and up the hill it goes. Now, one definite thing to keep in mind when towing is that again, regen braking is pretty limited going downhill at 90%, still fairly limited at 80%, even still a hair limited at 70% battery capacity. Then we see exactly the same thing at the lower end of the capacity chart for the Rivian. So when this battery is down at around 30%, you have maybe 80% or so engine power available or motor power, I guess you'd say. The same sort of limiting also happens at lower states of charge. When this battery was at around 30%, it appeared that the vehicle was limiting power at around 70 or 80% of total output. And it was definitely noticeable in some of the longer uphill stretches where maybe you just wanted to see if you could pass someone. There was no one in front of me, so I definitely put my foot down on the accelerator pedal a little bit. Wasn't trying to pass anybody, I just wanted to see what it could do. And you could definitely feel that limit in power. To put that in perspective, we're still talking about a lot of power. And compared to an average pickup truck in America with 350 to 400 horsepower from a V8 engine, they still probably have less power and less passing ability than this did at 30% state of charge. And they'd have some gears to have to row through. Not always will you find the right gear ratio for what you want in those trucks either. So sometimes uh, it may downshift and then it's going to have to upshift and then you won't have the passing power available to you anymore because you're in a different gear ratio. That sort of thing does not happen in the Rivian. At the moment, my towing bottom line with the Rivian R1T is that my opinion is a little bit complicated. I love the amount of power that we find in the R1T, and I do really like the adaptive air suspension. But some of these components are probably why the R1T has sort of an unusual feel while towing. I suspect that given time, Rivian could correct a lot of these flaws again in software, and maybe that's giving Rivian a pass. Maybe I like the R1T a bit too much. Let me know what you think about all that down there in the comment section. But at least for the moment, even though there are a few flaws, I have to say that none of them, for me at least, are deal breakers when it comes to towing with the R1T. That said, however, I think that towing with the Ford Lightning is much more of a normal truck experience. Be sure and hit that subscribe button down there. Find me over at Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all those other social places. And of course, check out all the other related Rivian R1T content on the channel also. I'll see all of you later.